If you're doing the same weight loss challenge every single year, by definition, you're failing. It ain't working. If you're doing dry January every year because you need to detox, what you're doing ain't working. If you're losing the same 15 pounds every year, it ain't working. Start to look at the root cause of things. I'm Brian. I help executives inside of corporate America transform their personal life to become as successful as their professional careers have been. I'm an expert at doing this because I did it myself. I sat in your seat for two decades. I am not special. If I can do it, so can you. Welcome back to the show. This is episode 213 of the Success Left Podcast. Like I said, I'm your host, Brian Panuzzo. It's great to have you back here. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. We celebrated Father's Day yesterday. Uh, incredible day. Full transparency, I'm actually recording this the day before Father's Day. Uh, I got a busy schedule. I just got back, just got back from the incredible, incredible trip back home. I live in, or I am from, just outside of New York City, Manhattan, Bergen County, New Jersey. I went back, stayed at my dad's house in Bergenfield for one, two, three, four, five, five days, four days, five days, four nights, five days. I uh, spent a full day in the city uh, going to see clients, going to see a new executive team that I'll be starting with soon, seeing old colleagues, friends, high school buddies. Uh, went out to dinner at one of my, not favorite restaurants, but like where I used to go get drinks a lot. So it's very nostalgic. Uh, they do a great Bobby Vans in uh, Midtown. There's a bunch of different uh, locations to be fair. The original Bobby Vans is probably the best. I did not go there. I went to one, went to the one that was always right near my office and quite frankly, convenient for me to get out of the city. Uh, but they have steak on toast, which I'm a huge fan of. I make it for my wife all the time or not all the time, special occasions. They do a very nice chicken parm. It's a steakhouse. It was great though. The food was really good. The company that I was with was why I was there. Uh, got to see some old colleagues, were very close friends, uh, and had an absolute blast. Had a whirlwind of a week, played several rounds of golf. Uh, got to see a lot of friends. Got to see my dad a bit. Got to see uh, members of my golf club, which I still have a residency member, non-residency, they call it member membership there. Uh, and it's home. It's home for me. It's always good to go back home. And I, that hit me um, a few weeks, two weeks ago now, when I got up to my old college for my 25th college reunion. And a good, good friend of mine who is, who's the athletic director there, Chris Kenny, he shot me a text and it said, welcome home. And I hadn't thought about that in a while. Um, it's always good. I'm like, like getting a little bit emotional, just talking about it right now. It's always good to get back into familiar places and to go back and to be a little nostalgic, uh, but to really be grateful. And it's something that I've gotten really good at going back to New Jersey. Now, the first couple of years, uh, for those of you who don't know my story, uh, we moved to California a little under five years ago, uh, four and 10 months or so four four years, 10 months. And, uh, for the first couple of years, I'd go back and I would, I would like, like kind of be a little depressed that I didn't still live there. And it felt like it ruined my, my trip back. And now uh, I go back and I'm so appreciative, so appreciative for the time I spent there, for the relationships that I have, for my ability to go back whenever the hell I want. And so I'm not sure why I started down this road, but what just hit me was like, people are so goddamn afraid to change. And it's like, why would you ever be afraid? to try something different. You can always go back. You can always go back. I can always get on a plane and I can always fly to New Jersey. I can always go back into New York City where I spent 20 years working inside of a corporate career. I can always go, go get into traffic if I want to. Shit, I can do that in LA. Uh, I can always do the things that I used to do. But why not try something different? Why not experience something new? And you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. You don't know that there is something better out there for you, for me. I have found something better for me. I have found a more purposeful career. I have found something quite frankly that I am so much better at than trading bonds than I ever would have been being a financial professional. Now I just fucking work with all of them because I know what I'm great at and I'm 
starting to exponentially rise in my life in a lot of different areas because I'm willing, number one, to try new things. Number two, to focus on things that I know that are really meant for me. And so if you, and I have this conversation a lot with a lot of people, if you feel this uneasiness, if you feel this disconnect, if you feel this discomfort, this frustration, you're a little lost. You're like in the neighborhood, you know where, where you are. You're, it's like you're driving around your neighborhood, but you can't figure out how to get back to your house. And it's familiar because you keep doing these things over and over and over again, but you're not quite sure what the destination is. I'm telling you from experience in my own life and from now working with hundreds, hundreds of people and having hundreds of these conversations, this is exciting because you're close, you're close, but it's a really frustrating place to be. Imagine driving around a neighborhood where you kind of know where you're going, but you're not sure where the frick you're supposed to go. That can get real frustrating. That is the misalignment between what you actually want, what maybe your unconscious mind wants, what maybe deep down you haven't admitted that you want yet, and the actions that you're taking that are not in alignment, that are not supportive, that are maybe the old you. And there's a disconnect there that's, that's slowly but surely eating you alive. And you wake up on Monday morning frustrated with yourself, and you wake up on Sunday morning or where, whenever, a Friday morning after a Thursday that got away from you, a little bit of shame, and you say you're not going to do it again. And then four or five days later, that promise wears off. And because you haven't kept promises to yourself, you're good at not keeping promises to yourself. And you lack the confidence to continue to do so. And so you find yourself in this cycle. And that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about. I titled the episode something completely different. And I'll touch on that first because this all, I'm going to be all over the place. Once again, it's my show. I can be wherever I want to be. And I thank you for being here. By the way, if you're new here, welcome. I appreciate you. Go back a couple of episodes. There's a episode called my story and also the one before that, my Ted talk, you'll learn a lot about me and my unique gifts and why I'm so qualified to speak into this microphone to you right now there are a lot of qualified people who do a lot of qualified things i know that i am doing the thing i'm supposed to do working with the type of people inside of corporate america who i work with helping those people guiding them to transform their life because i did it and I've, as i've said over and over and over again i am not special the only thing that's special about me is my unwillingness to stop doing it my unwillingness to give up doing it my unwillingness to waver from the commitments that I've made to myself. And now I understand, I know enough to know that that's pretty goddamn special because not many people do that, but that's not a unique gift. It's not something that I was born with. So if I wasn't born with it, maybe you weren't either, but I learned it and so can you. And so I appreciate you being here. If you're new, welcome. If you haven't left a rating or review for the show yet, I would love for you to. You can watch this on YouTube staring into the camera right now quick flex you can listen on apple Podcasts. you can listen on spotify i may be other places but those are probably the primary places for you to find me if you enjoy my content if you've been coming back here over and over and over again that's amazing could you tell somebody else about it and if you do enjoy this content i also produce regular content on instagram and linkedin it's my full name brian panuzzo B-R-I-A-N-P-A-N-N-U-Z-Z-O. And what you really, really would love is my daily email. Short, quick hitter, 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every goddamn day. Because I live it. I show you that I do it. I show my clients that I do it. I log the food that I put in my body. I log the drinks that I put in my body. I had a thousand calories of Haagen-Dazs ice cream. Unplanned, unscripted on a Tuesday night last week. And I got to put it in my fitness pal, the app that I use to track my food. And I felt like a real loser when I was doing it. But you know what? It held me accountable the next day to get back on track. It held me accountable the day after that. How could I possibly have check-ins with all of my clients and preach them about consistency 
and talk to them about all the strategies we have inside of, our, of my programs, the business traveler blueprint inside of high performance health, my corporate, my corporate executive program, my company wellness program, my one-on-one -on -one high touch, high service, customized coaching program. I'm constantly helping people before they go on a road trip, before they go on a business trip. I'm going to go eat like a slob for four days, but we have our moments. So what did I do? I got back on track, got back on track, had a good day the next day. And by the way, that meant a good day for me in New York and New Jersey meant drinking alcohol Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And so good days don't mean all or none. I would argue that good days when you're sitting at home during a regular work week shouldn't involve four straight days of alcohol consumption, five straight days, four straight days. All right. Hold yourself accountable. It's an insurance policy. Accountability is an insurance policy on your future success. Just knowing that all of my clients can see what I do because we are accountable to each other helps me. Why am I going to put this in my mouth? If I put it in my mouth, I have to record it. If I record it, everyone can see it. Is that the example I want to live by? The future version of me, I have a future version of myself that I've crafted. I've written down on a piece of paper. I've spoken into a voice recorder. I play in the morning to remind myself every day that I am not yet who I desire to be in my mental, physical, relational performance inside the program we call your energy, work, and love. Your body, your mental fitness, your physical fitness, your work, your career, your money, your philanthropy, your impact, whatever it may be, your love, your relationships, as a husband, as a father, as a friend. I have a very specific version, and I always look up when I start to talk about this because I envision that person being up there. And it's a very quick check, Brian, of tomorrow that I so desire to be. Would you do this right now? Would you eat a thousand calories of caramel cone haagen ice cream, which is fantastic, by the way. It's like the waffle, it's like waffle cone pieces ch uh, covered in chocolate. I don't know if there's chocolate chunks in there or not. I can't be. It's just chocolate covered waffle cones in like caramel ice cream. F yes. They could just make the chocolate waffle cone pieces with just a little bit of ice cream all day. I usually just go digging around for the chocolate waffle pieces, waffle cone pieces. So accountability, huge, huge. And while I didn't have any in the moment, it was probably the couple old fashions and the couple glasses of wine that I had before that stunted my accountability uh, tuning in, but picked it up right where I needed to the next day and I moved it forward. I bring up the trip to New York, the trip to uh, back home because I've been talking a lot about, you know, throwing yourself in and out of these stages, in and out of momentum. And a couple of things, a couple of themes from, from the trip that I thought were really powerful that I just wanted to share quickly with you quickly. Okay. Number one, let's go here first. All right. I just flexed for you before. I should have worn a sleeve of the shirt for this episode. It would have been more appropriate. I titled the episode. WTF have you been doing? And by far, by a mile, every, just about every single person that I saw told me how great I looked, asked me what the hell I've been doing. Most, most of you, many of you used the actual, what the fuck have you been doing? Because I look a lot different than I did a year ago. And I haven't seen some of these people that I saw last week in nine months. The last time I was home was October. Six, seven months, seven months, something like that. Eight months. I have trouble with math on the fly. I was a financial professional for 20 years. Sometimes I have trouble with math on the fly, but some of these people I haven't seen in years, years, three years, four years, five years, couple, couple guys I haven't seen since, since I moved. And so the change in my physical body now, now it's important to acknowledge that I, I was not, I, I was overweight. I was, my body was broken down. I did have drug, drug, gambling, alcohol addictions, all of it. I looked vastly different 10 plus years ago than I do today. 
But five years ago, I looked pretty good. Uh, for a high performing corporate professional, I look great. And so for them to now go, whoa, what the F have you been doing? That's an even greater sign of my transformation in my opinion. Now, people that saw me in October when I was home, in August when I was home last summer, even they were like, Jesus. And so it was a really cool confirmation of the consistency that I've applied to my life and the intensity. And I used to say consistency, consistency beats intensity every day of the week. And while that is true, if it was one or the other, what I learned over the last year is that does, it does not have to be one or the other. It can be and consistency and intensity. What if you brought consistency and intensity into your life outside of the office? You have consistency and intensity inside the office covered. You don't need my help with that. What if you started to apply the same level of care and consideration and planning and ultimately grit, a little bit of grit outside the office? You'll hear a lot of that in the TED Talk episode. The four characteristics that you have exhibited as a high performer inside of your career. It doesn't matter if you're a trader or a plumber. You have these traits. And so what if you started to do that? Because that's what I did. And I created, I have created, and I ain't done. I, ain't, I am not done. But I am in the process of, that's the right way to say this, the process of creating a pretty cool result. Pretty cool result. And people were impressed. They should be. Hmm, they should be. I look good. And I'm receiving it as well. I'm receiving it. You know, people give you a compliment. You brush it off. You downplay it. You talk down about yourself. I was with a guy. He kept telling me what a loser he was and he was broke. I'm like, bro, you got to change your self-talk. This is not acceptable the way you speak to, to yourself. If, if you're going to speak to yourself that way, how am I supposed to look at you any differently? So watch what you say about yourself. Your words are very powerful. And so what I am realizing, especially with these, what the fuck have you been doing comments, is another conversation that I had with a great friend of mine. And I told him, I said, you know, when people change, I think the biggest mistake they make ultimately is that they, they don't do it for long enough. And what I mean by that is they don't taste what real, real fundamental change is. They, they get on the fringe of it. They touch it a little bit. They flirt with it. And then life shakes them up and they go back. And so they develop this relationship that has them presupposing that they can start to feel a little bit better when things get okay. And then when the storm comes again, whatever that storm may be, they have to go back to what they're comfortable with. Now, please understand comfort does not equal health. Comfort equals comfort. And so when you find yourself waking up on Monday morning going, well, that didn't go so well. Last three days, that was a loss. Took an L, took an L. You know what that feeling is. So while you do feel like shit, you are foggy, you aren't getting done what you know you need to and deep down what you truly want to, it's a comfortable place to be. Comfort food is not really healthy, is it? From a long-term perspective, if all you ate was comfort food, you would not be very comfortable in 10 years. And so don't mistake comfort for good. Comfort is just comfort. Staying on the couch, not going to the gym is way more comfortable than going to the gym. Long-term, probably flip that around. Probably allows me 
to feel a whole lot better than the person who's been on the couch habitually for a decade. And so people flirt with things. You do your 30 day, no alcohol challenge. You do your clean up your diet. You remove sugar. I took sugar out of my diet and I felt better. I was talking to another great friend of mine. He actually said something that I think goes very well with most people don't do it for long enough. It was something to the effect of everything's like a baby. It takes nine months. And I was like, that sounds like a title of a podcast. And like, how many things do you do for nine months that are like changes in your life, right? All, all the things we challenge ourselves to change is 35 days, 60 days, 75 hard. I am not shitting on 75 hard. But if you don't have an exit plan out of these things, out of these ideas, out of these challenges, what are we doing? If you're doing the same to my, to my great friend, Brendan Hearn, as I said on his podcast, pulling the cork a few weeks ago when I was up in Boston. If you're doing the same weight loss challenge every single year, by definition, you're failing. It ain't working. It's not working. If you're doing dry January every year because you need to detox, what you're doing ain't working. If you're losing the same 15 pounds every year, it ain't working. If you get laid, uh, you know, once or twice a month and then you get hot for, you get hot you get lucky for two or three weeks, and then you go back to getting laid once or twice a month. What you're doing as a partner, as a spouse, as a communicator, as a provider, as a partner, as a friend, it ain't working. Start to look at the root cause of things. If any of those issues were comparable to an issue in your business, you would fucking figure it out in a week and you would move forward. You would go right to the root. You would not deal with it over and over and over again. You would not try the next re thing that you see on Instagram or the next idea you hear on a podcast. You would just figure it the fuck out and you would fix it if it was in your business. But we don't do that in our personal life. We don't do that outside the office. We try all the bullshit. We do all the challenges. You're not doing this stuff for long enough. You're tasting what it feels like to feel good. But what I told this great friend of mine is you start to reset your standard at some point. And there's no magical formula to this. You reset your standard. And so I'm at a point now in my life that there is never, never a place that I can get back to that I was 10 years ago as an individual outside of the office, as a husband, there's never a place that I can get, I can get back to because I've gotten too far away from that. I'm too far away. And so I'm unwilling to break the standard that I've created in my life now. Will I go home for four or five days at a time and, and drink, have, have several drinks every, every day for four straight days and take down a lot of ice cream unplanned mm. on a Tuesday night? Yeah, I will. I've been on two trips that would most likely have thrown people off for over a month when they get back in the last two weeks. I went to Boston and Vermont to see college friends, old basketball teammates and go to my 25th reunion. And I just went home for a lot of work, but a bunch of fun as well. Both of those trips were four, five days, four nights long, five nights long. They involved daily alcohol. They involved me being out of my routine. They involved me sleeping in beds that were not mine. They involved me definitely being tired, being lower energy, not getting good quality sleep, being out of the normal things that I do. But guess what I did? I adapted the routine to my environment. I brought my standards to 
the environment. Did I adjust those standards? Of course I did. But I got gym workouts in. I took a lot of steps. I ate low calorie, high protein sources in the meaningless moments of the day. I didn't waste bullets. I used them wisely. I talked to myself before I knew I was going into an environment that could just be a YOLO sitch because of my standard, because I've done it for long enough. I've been doing this for a decade now. In one of my emails, successlift.com slash join, J-O-I-N, talked about years, thinking in years, not months. That will get me exactly zero clients. I know this, but I would rather be honest with you. And you may work with me for six months. You may work with me for 12 months. I've had people working with me for more than 24 months, not because they haven't gotten results, because they continue to get great results. And they're like, why in the world would I ever stop doing this? I'm part of the same fitness and nutrition program as a fitness and nutrition professional because I'm getting results. And why would I change that when I enjoy the results that I'm getting? But I want you to have the tools to go live your life if you want to after six months or 12 months or 24 months. I want you to be able to do that on your own. But make no mistake, I am very upfront with everybody that I begin to work with. If you have come into my program because you think that you're going to reverse a decade or two decades worth of behavior in three, four, or even six months, you're in the wrong place. And it doesn't matter what place you're in, you are not getting that result. This is a multi-year thing. This is a decade-long thing. There is no destination there is no finish line to becoming elite. It is never ending. It's never ending. The people who get great results live that stuff. The people who don't just understand it. You understand that you're supposed to drink less. You understand you're supposed to communicate more with your husband or your wife. You understand that you're supposed to eat better. But you're not living it. And in this information world where we have unlimited amounts of info at the, at the tip of our fingers, I'm staring at a, at a laptop right now and I got a phone in my hand. The amount of information we have access to is unlimited. What are we doing with it? We've never really been in a worse place as a society. Now I'm not a doomsday person. I think this is the greatest time to be in live and alive in the history of civilization definitely did not want to take a dump in a hole and wipe my ass with a leaf. Okay. Like people did a hundred plus years ago. I'm good. I'm definitely good with this time, but people are as unhappy as they've ever been. They're as unhealthy as they've ever been. You got to do it for long enough. The information's free. You got to do it. I can't do your pushups for you. I can't drag you across the finish line. My programs are not like most programs. There are no quick fixes. It is not a challenge after challenge. I, I, I usually attempt to push more people away than I accept because I don't want people coming in and not doing the work I need them to do. It is as much an interview with me as it is you screening me to see if I'm the right fit for you. And for people who hesitate with me, it's a massive red flag. And I'll follow up because I want you to do, I know, I know that you're capable. And so I'll push you, I'll follow up. But if you've had a conversation with me, now this is ultimately on me. I haven't done a good enough job to get you to feel that sense of urgency. But if you've had a conversation with me and you haven't taken action, you're in trouble. Not because you've missed out on my program, because you've done what you've always done and will likely always do. Think about something and not do it. And so I would highly, highly encourage you to start doing it. But when you do understand that we've talked about momentum recently, this isn't a Monday to Thursday life. 
You're not a C student. You're not a D student. Because that's what that's that's D student stuff, Monday to Thursday. But when you do it, you gotta do it for longer. This is like this isn't a this isn't a 30 day challenge. All right. It's not a 30 day challenge. It's forever. If you want an elite life, it's forever. Think about how long you've been willing to go to work every day. Day in, day out. Apply that type of work ethic, apply that type of mentality, apply that type of grit, apply the planning, the preparation that you do to your career, to every other area, every other area, and you'll do just fine. Appreciate you guys. Hope you had a great, great weekend. Have a great week, and I'll see you back here next week.